So guys, I want to ask you a question. Let's say Batman v Superman. Let's put Batman v Superman as a film aside. And let's say that Ben Affleck kills it as Batman. He gives the best performance uh, from a Batman we, like we have ever seen. Um, does this end the era of internet users freaking out over casting rumors? Because we all remember when Ben Affleck was announced as Batman and how that went, right? Everyone was just like, no, no, he can't act. He can't, you know, portrayal a Batman. You know, he, he doesn't have the, the, uh, the stuff, you know, what it takes. So I want to ask you guys, should Ben Affleck be the best Batman we've ever gotten? Or even a great Batman? Should we not be worried about casting rumors going forward? We shouldn't be, but it's, it's not going to change the Internet's mentality at all. Example, everyone freaked out about Heath Ledger being the Joker, and he is arguably one of the best movie portrayal villains of all time. People still freaked out about Ben Affleck being Batman. So I don't think that's ever going to end, but um, for – I mean it should – I don't think people, as long as you cast someone who fits the role and they're a great actor, you know, Ben Affleck's not the greatest actor, but he's good and he fit the role, so people shouldn't worry about it, but I, it's never going to change. Yeah, I completely agree. I don't think it's going to change one bit. Um, fans are going to cast who they want and they're going to they're gonna want to be this Wolverine or this Batman or exactly. this Spider-Man. It's, and I mean, it, it's just, it's going to go on and on and on, so... Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, I guess it's that everyone in their own mind has an idea of what the character should be, you know. Um, nobody saw Michael Keaton as Batman, you know. And why is it only the DC characters, you know? Like, I, that's what I've noticed. It's majority DC characters that people freak out over, you know. Like, uh, nobody really said anything about Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. Nobody really sure. said anything about Robert Downey as Iron Man, you know. Like, I don't remember... There being an outburst. And there wasn't like, really, well, this is different because he's very unknown, but there wasn't really much negativity around Tom Holland being cast as Spider Man either. It was just people didn't know who he was. That's the only thing. But some people still wanted Andrew Garfield too. Like, I was one of those people who still wanted Andrew Garfield to be in the crossover, even though it, it was like unlikely going to happen. You know, it's just, you know, it would have so been cool if they could have made it happen, but. Yeah. Well, guys, welcome to uh, Rumor Central from Apocalypse Movies. I'm your host, Gio, and I'm here with the Apocalypse regulars, regulars uh, Jake and Jacob. How are you guys doing today? Pretty good, good. Man. Yeah, good. Good, good. Well, this is the podcast where we don't talk about anything official. We just uh, speculate on the, uh, what's the word, hypothetical? The Theories. Theor theoretical. Speculate. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, so let's get started with it. Um well, it looks like uh, Wolverine 3 could be getting an Old Man Logan adaptation. Um, this has been a hot topic for the past couple of weeks, actually ever since Wolverine 3 was announced. So, according to a rumor, uh, Fox is indeed adapting the Old Man Logan, and the film will have an R rating. Um, this has always been the plan, according to the rumor. So, real quickly, I just want to recap the Old Man Logan story for those of you who don't know. Um, it takes place in a post-apocalyptic world, dystopian world, where Wolverine is like the last survivor, the last surviving X-Men. And um, like, let's say the United States, it's split up into like different quarters. Like the Hulk owns one part of the Western part of the United States. Uh, Red Skull owns another part and there's somebody else. But basically, uh, Logan has to travel across uh, the way to... Um, well, help me out. What does he? What does he have to do? He he does something like. Uh, well, it's kind of like he's kind of hunting down. Um, I think he's going after the Hulk, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Well, and yeah. he's traveled with a blind Hawkeye who insists on driving driving the vehicle the entire way. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's kind of a it's a different it's a very much a different take on a x-men and superhero story mm -hmm. and yeah. it's, i mean the cover of the story actually has blood running down old wolverine's claws so wow. um that's why the rated r version has kind of been popped up a lot with this kind of story and it's a very so. it's a very tragic story like i mean not to get into too much spoilers but the family that he has well yeah it starts off with you know. the death of his family and, right you know he's kind of become this father out in the open kind of like an old western where it's an isolated home and it's just as him and his family and yeah 
and that kind of kicks off the whole event. So, mm-hmm. and those characters in there, like you mentioned, a blinded Hawkeye, you have a Hulk, you have a Red, a Skull, Red Skull, a like skeletonized Captain America. Mm-hmm. Um, there's all kinds of bigger and somewhat smaller uh, characters throughout the Marvel's comic book. Yeah, yeah, it's a very ugly world. Now we know that should Fox uh, adapt this Old Man Logan story, which we all think they're going to do. You can't use a Hawkeye or a Hulk or Red Skull. So I want to ask you guys, how do you feel about Wolverine, uh, this last film being Old Man Logan? And who do you see replacing these characters? Like uh, Hawkeye is obviously the uh, the ally to Wolverine. And then you have uh, Hulk and Red Skull who kind of, you know, became their own, you know, uh, anti-heroes, let's say. Well, Red Skull is like straight up bad. So what do you guys think about this? Well, I mean... For one, as for being the old man's story, uh, Logan storyline, I think it's something that we've all wanted for a very long time. We've been talking about for a very long time. I think it fits the it fits the build as far as it being Hugh Jackman's final time with the claws, all that kind of stuff. But um, as for the characters, I know we've kind of debated, and I kind of threw the idea idea out there like probably a year ago that Cyclops could replace the Hawkman, the Hawkeye character in the storyline. Um, I think. Just one, Cyclops wasn't given the greatest justice in the original X-Men films. And two, their relationship was arguably some of the best things in those films. Um, And to see it kind of be brought back in another story uh, would be very interesting, especially since it being the final time, well, supposedly final time for Hugh Jackman. Um, I think that'd be great to see those two uh, in this kind of story. Um, As for the Red Skull... I think that, you know, kind of going along with speculation and rumors lately, Sabretooth would be a great fit, kind of tying yeah. it all together. Um, and I don't know if they would, you know, either retcon the whole brother side of it or just stick with it. Um, well, it's technically canon. Yeah, it, so... Because the timeline didn't mess up that part of... That's true, because it was older, so... Um, but yes, they don't care about timeline. Exactly, also, so... But so. I think Sabretooth would be a great fit there. And as for the Hulk uh, figure, I think someone like the Blob... Kind of similar in build, you know, not as badass, obviously, but um, an X Men character, you know, or even someone like Juggernaut. In Juggernaut, a way. A, Juggernaut, you know, yeah, he's that's big, pretty he's strong. That'd be cool. Um, so those kind of characters would definitely fit. I mean, but they can literally choose anybody. They can choose someone we haven't seen before, that's which true. I would be interested in because there's tons of X Men characters that they haven't touched that's on. Omega so Omega Red, yeah. yeah. For me, I mean, I it makes sense if this is going to be the story that they're going to adapt from because it's the story that everyone always wanted to see and it supposedly is Hugh Jackman's last appearance as Wolverine in a Wolverine film. So if they're going to go out with a bang with this, I do think this is the right story to tell. And as far as the character replacements, I mean, I totally wish they could actually do Hawkeye, Red Skull, and the Hulk. That would be freaking awesome. But since they can't do that for for rights issues, I... So... I would love to see Cyclops in the Hawkeye role. That would be so interesting, especially with their dynamic dynamic in the past. But um, we've heard this whole time that Patrick Stewart's going to be in the movie. He could and be the Hawkeye role. I, I have a feeling that they're going to go with – because the first three X-Men films – the, it's arguably a relationship between Professor X and Wolverine. That's a huge part of those movies. So it would make sense to go to end it. Their last appearances together would be in this film. But if I had to choose, I would choose Cyclops, and it would have to be James Marsden playing Cyclops. Um, but I think they're going to go with the Professor X. As far as the Red Skull, I don't know the specific role of these characters in the comics, but as far as the Red Skull role, I think they should go with Doctor Doom because... I don't know how what's going on with the Fantastic Four property, but as of now, Fox still has the rights to, to, to the Fantastic Four characters, and they totally got it wrong with last year's movie. But a way to introduce one of the characters from, from the Fantastic Four, they could bring in Doctor Doom. He could be that role of Red Skull. I think that would be incredible. And then as far as the Hulk, I think Sabretooth can play the Hulk role. And I, it doesn't have to be you know similar in size. The Blob or Juggernaut would be really cool, but... I would love to see Doctor Doom in the Red Skull role, Sabretooth in the Hulk role, and then either Cyclops or Professor X in the Hawkeye role. I think that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's actually pretty good. Um, as far as Doctor Doom, do you bring back Toby Cabell or no. do you cast someone new? You, 
You totally well, I, dismiss that movie. Well, I, I think, think either way, it would have to be someone older because it'd have to be a Doctor Doom who's been around for exactly. years, like decades. So, yeah, that's so someone like Russell Crowe. That's very true too. But I feel like if they're gonna bring in this Doctor Doom, you're right. It would have to be aged up because I was imagining you bring in this character, this Doctor Doom character, and then whoever plays him in this movie would play him in this universe. Yeah, it's gotta be. So, yeah, I think it'd have to be someone who's older. Who would look yeah. like someone they would cast in the future then, for a younger Doctor Doom? Maybe. And then you could you could age him up. You could cast someone who's you know maybe in their forties. Yeah. Age him up for this movie, and then age him down for a potential appearance in another X Men movie or something like that. Yeah, that, that could work. They can they can play around with it, and um, you know it looks like if they have the R rating, they they can have the creative freedom to kind of do whatever they like. Um, Who'd you like to see in these roles, Gio? I, 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 I love Doctor Doom. Yeah. Um, I, I love James Marsden. Um, I, I don't want him to have the visor. I kind of want him to have like a like a blindfold around him, kind of like how well, that Hawkeye has, you know. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I'm pretty sure Patrick Stewart's gonna. That's what been one of the earliest rumors is that Patrick Stewart's gonna be in this film because it's Hugh Jackman's last film, and this film will apparently close out the Brian Singer universe. Um, it'll be the last. That we see of the original cast so uh i mean what a way to go out you know like have cyclops and uh, professor x find a way to get them both in the movie i think that'd be great so let's move on to uh another story a uh, rumor um this one involves a very big film coming out this month uh three weeks from now officially so according to a report um batman v superman when they brought on ben affleck to uh play batman he was also brought brought on to kind of uh, rework the look like look at the script and you know offer any notes and apparently he uh, looked at the script and wasn't thrilled with it. He would sit around reworking the script throughout production and uh, make little edits and rewrites and whatnot to uh, the character and to also the uh, film itself, the story. Um, now we've heard previous rumors that. Affleck also brought on Chris Terrio, who was his writing partner for Argo, to help out with the story. And I wanted to ask you guys, uh, how do you feel about this news? What does it say about Warner Brothers that, you know, an, a writer such as Ben Affleck, an Oscar-winning writer, um, you know, came in and basically thought, you know, what the hell is this, you know? Well, I don't know if you saw it, but there was, there's been some updates on this since since the original story came out. Mm -hmm. um, apparent, I don't know, did you hear about that? Mm -mm, no. So it's... apparently Ben Affleck was talking with a uh, French magazine premiere. Uh, I don't know who they are, but um, was it Ben Affleck or Chris Terry who they were talking ben to? Ben Affleck. Yeah, yeah, and he said, uh, he said, uh, the script is great. There was not a line to change in the dialogue. So the, it, this article on Screen Rant actually is kind of dismissing the idea, but going with the original, the original story, I, um, I think that that would make sense. I mean, no matter what, even if the script was really great, it would make sense for Ben Affleck and Chris Terrio to come in and, you know, just adjust it a little bit. And polish. I guarantee you they did. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you this updated story is just Ben Affleck, you know, just, you know, giving, giving the original script praise. He doesn't want to take credit for the script being good or bad or anything. He just, mm -hmm. I think he just is kind trying to shush up the, the rumors of him actually making changes to the script. So I, I'd put money on it that there was changes made because he didn't say there wasn't. He said there wasn't a line to change in the dialogue. So that just says maybe he really liked the script, but maybe they did make changes to it. I don't know. What do you think, Jake? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's, uh, I think bringing Ben Affleck on, Bennett Affleck on kind of comes with his knowledge of script writing and directing and uh, everything behind the camera. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it would be um, a bit of a missed opportunity even if Zack Snyder didn't take the opportunity to ask him, hey, do you think this could have been better? Or, you know, give him a, a, a copy of the script and let Ben Affleck just play with it. Um, do I think, you know, that he wasn't thrilled with it? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think he signed on for a reason. He read the script. He's like, yeah, I want to do this movie. Um, but I, yeah, I think there were maybe a parts where he was like, no, maybe we should do this instead. And, you know, maybe he called up his writing buddy because Terry was like, hey, what do you think about this or this or this? And because uh, every movie, it's not, not a, there's, made, there's few movies that go through one draft. There are tons of drafts for each movie, especially a movie like this, because 
there's so many different parts and layers and people involved. Mm-hmm. Um, so going from Zack Snyder to the original writers to Ben Affleck to Chris Terrio, it definitely went through changes, but I don't think that there was a major overhaul in the script. I think that there was just minor changes here and there. And uh, I think that Zack Snyder may have asked for Affleck and Terrio's opinion on that. So I'm reading these comments again, and I think it's he's saying that after Chris Terrio came and worked on the script, there wasn't anything that needed to be changed. I think that's what it's saying because he says, talking about Chris Terrio and Zack Snyder, their meeting was fruitful. They managed to create the perfect hybrid. The script is great. There was not a line to change in the dialogue. I can tell you this is rare. So, so they did come in, but I don't know if Ben Affleck sat down and rewrote some lines. Who knows? I guarantee. I think he would maybe worked on his lines as Batman, but who knows? We have no idea. That's why right. this is rumor central. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the, I mean, the the only thing that I'm taking into consideration is that you know David S. Goyer and Snyder both wrote the script, and they also did Man of Steel, um, which. You know, is a film people either love or hate, you know, um, and you can't have that going with Batman v Superman. You know, that this film really needs to hit to set up an entire uh, DC universe. So I, I think it kind of makes sense to have rewrites. Um, so, yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting because, you know, David Escore, he had a huge part to do with Man of Steel, obviously, and along with Zack Snyder. But ever since the arrival of Ben Affleck, you haven't heard his name once. Mm-hmm. And I, that may do with, there may be part in that, but there may also uh, be part in the fact that he made those comments last year. I don't know if you guys remember that. He kind of made some harsh comments towards Marvel and what they're doing and kind of bashed on them like publicly and um, maybe something happened there. But uh, it seems like David Escoyer is kind of not involved anymore in this universe, which is a little bit shocking because he almost seemed like he was going to be one of the main uh, the main heads in bringing this DC universe alive. So, well, yeah, I mean, he, he was a big part in the Christopher Nolan uh, Dark Knight trilogies. He wrote the story for each film, and uh, you know, uh, I mean, that's actually a good point, Jake. I didn't consider that. Um, it looks like maybe uh, Chris Terrio is taking a spot. Who knows? <laughs> All right, well, that's gonna do it for Rumor Central, guys. Very short podcast. Uh, keep it short. Um, I want to thank my people for joining me first, uh, Jake Berlin. Why don't you tell people where they can find you? Uh, Twitter, Instagram, at Qui-Gon Jake. Um, you can check out our all Star Wars podcast, Padawan podcast, and all of our new movie reviews we're doing. Yep. And Jacob, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jacob Barley underscore, and you can find me on this Apocalypse Movies YouTube channel. Please subscribe. Please hit that like button. We really appreciate it. And thank you to everyone who's been watching Rumor Central. It's been getting a lot of views a lot more quicker than some of our other podcasts. So good idea, Gio. This is a freaking awesome podcast. Yeah, thank you, man. You guys can find me on Twitter at GeoRambles24. You can find all these rumors on our website, uh, apocalypsemovies.com. Just look under Rumor Central. And uh, until then, we'll see you guys next time.